Michael, what pressure is he under? The, the pressure of being LeBron James' son. He's had to deal with that for his whole entire life. So you how, know, do you, and, how, do you, how do you quantify that as pressure? We can't change the fact that his dad is LeBron James. He's been dealing with LeBron James being his daddy for 19 years. He should be able to accept that already. I'm talking about from a basketball standpoint, what is his pressure? His pressure is if he misses a shot, he knows tomorrow morning everybody in the world is going to be talking about him missing four or five basketball shots. LeBron James Jr. has a four-year deal. He is solidified, guaranteed a Laker for four years. There is no pressure in what he's doing. You're saying that he's so fragile that he can't take people talking about him so he can't shoot the ball? We're on. Uh, you need to carry his little baby home later and back somewhere to where nobody gets talked about. Because this is a grown man's league and everyone gets talked about. I don't hate the kid. I don't think nobody's hurt him. He's still trying to pile on him, bro. The, the, the point is, and that's exactly what fun They are. Fun. They are piling on him. What do you mean nobody's piling on him? I, I, I never call him a fun. I can't even finish what I'm saying without somebody interrupting me. It, it, it's, it's like I can't no, even make my you point. you was interrupted. I, I went on mute. The child sound like some haters, dog. Okay, uh, tell us why. How y'all gonna be sitting here on a show? Hating on a billionaire because he hired his son. You still ain't trying to get up, right? I can't make my point though. All I'm but telling you, you the whole time. I somebody was talking, but you no, care about my point. Kwame Brown and Bronny James fans going at it. Check out this clip, and I'll come back with my comments. Hey, Kwame, I got a question for you. So, like, none of us live in the household with LeBron or Bronny. So, how can we speak for Bronny and say that he doesn't want this? Who's speaking for Bronny? I'm not speaking for Bronny. I repeated, well, I heard it, it no, may, no, no. I, I repeated what his father said. His father said Bronny don't care. How about the, the summer league stats? Because I think this kid is under a lot of pressure. I mean, we talk about what, what, him more what, than what pressure. What pressure is he under? The, the pressure of being LeBron James' son. He's had to deal with that for his whole entire life. And now that he's in the summer league, people are watching his game more than they're watching the number one draft picks. So you know, how, do you, and, how, do you, how do you quantify that as pressure? We can't change the fact that his dad is LeBron James. He's been dealing with uh, LeBron James being his daddy for 19 years. He, he should be able to accept that already. I'm talking about from a basketball standpoint, what is his pressure? His pressure is if he misses a shot, he knows tomorrow morning everybody in the world is going to be talking about him missing four or five basketball shots but in the matter just, of the game. Guess what, though? But guess what, but, though? That's just talk. He's not, he don't have the pressure of getting cut. The other second round picks have the pressure of being talked about and the pressure of coming into the office the next game, the next day, after that game, and being cut. LeBron okay. James Jr. Oh, okay. LeBron, James, LeBron James Jr. has a four year deal. He is solidified, guaranteed a Laker for four years. There is no pressure in what he's doing. You're saying that he's so fragile that he can't take people talking about him so he can't shoot the ball? Where, ah, uh, he need to carry his little baby home later back somewhere to where nobody gets talked about. Because this is a grown man's league and everyone gets talked about. He's in the, okay. best, he's in the best position possible to win. He has a father that's in his corner. He has a coach that's in his corner. And he has a team that committed to him for four years as a second round pick, which is unheard of. That is literally zero pressure. Zero. Okay, so okay, so nobody else has the pressure that, that LeBron has, right? So tell me who is Bronny the 27. I, I made my case that Bronny has zero pressure. He's not going to be fired for the next four years. What is the pressure just because somebody going to talk about him? It's just how oh, I'm trying to make my point, but you cut me off, Bobby. I ain't trying to disrespect you, brother. I'm, 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 my bad, my bad. Go on. <laughs> no worries, brother. But what I'm trying to say is, okay, nobody can tell you who the 27th pick in the summer league right now is. He goes out there and he plays his hardest, and he probably has worse stats than Brody. Nobody's gonna talk about it tomorrow. But if Brody go out there on this court and he miss four, shot, four shots back to back, people are gonna be on his back, and the kid only played two summer league games. Now, Granny, okay, let me ask you this. Granny, yeah, Granny he's did, not gonna be his daddy. He's not gonna be his daddy. He's not gonna be no, his no, daddy. Let, let me ask this. Did the 27th pick father is the greatest player who ever played the game? Everybody said he minds the game, so he knows what he's talking about. And that player's father, who knows all this basketball stuff, says that this kid can get minutes for the Lakers right now. Did that 27th pick father say that? No. So okay. No, then. but that's what but that's, is that's kinda, to, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. But what I'm saying is, I mean, give the kid a chance, man. His career is still early. Like, let's not just put this whole.
show, oh, he's a bum burning on him before his career even plays out. Let's give him a year or two to at least get comfortable and get settled in this. This is why I said what I said about LeBron earlier. Juan, I know you know what I said. It's real. I don't hate the kid. I don't think nobody turns to the kid on front of pile on him, bro. The, the, the point is, and that's exactly what Juan They are. Saying. They are calling on him. What do you mean nobody's calling on him? I, I never called him a bum. I never called him a bum. I, I, actually, I actually appreciate that he took a little more shot. I said he should go out on his heel. What I'm I'm speaking from a basketball standpoint. You guys think it's hate. If I had a father who controls an organization and a coach who is friends with my father and a whole media and a clutch sports that's all behind me and all I have to do is play basketball, that is absolutely zero pressure. I've been getting trained by yeah, professional but, players my entire life. What is the problem? I'm gonna go out, whether you like it or not, I'm gonna go out and that 30 times. I'm tired of listening to y'all say this. On top of that, his father said, it's lightweight, I'm watching NBA League Pass right now. It's lightweight, hilarious watching you do. Barney Bethany can get minutes over half you do. His dad said that, bro. That's why we all here criticizing that. Because LeBron said he said his son is this lightweight hitler to be better at half to do in the NBA. Not the summer league, not the G League. He said he's better at half to do in the NBA. So now that we're watching that, they're going to quit right there. See, I think they're going to quit right there. That's the key. See, I think with LeBron, I think, I think, and his son can't make the three to save his life. This actor, he's watching the dad's son of that, bro. That's why we have the Saturday ass. It's not because we hate Bron or we hate Bron. It's because Ron said he's better than half the league, but watching his son can't do nothing against the team. But, but see, when Bron said that, I took it from the perspective of I've heard NBA legends say that half of the guys in the NBA don't know how to play real basketball. But if you look at Bronny's game, well, well, you can tell the kid has a high IQ. Yeah, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Because we're changing the I've never heard an <laughs> NBA legend say that their son can get minutes in the league right now. I've never heard that. You're moving the goalposts to something else. This yeah, man, yeah, bro, you guys give, you guys give LeBron James. Hold on, hold on, you guys, hold on, hold on. You guys give LeBron James the credit of being the smartest guy in the game. But then when he's questioned on his decisions, you guys cry as if we're doing something wrong. Why can't he not be questioned on his decisions? But yeah, see, I can't, I can't, I can't even finish what I'm saying without somebody interrupting me. It, it, it's, it's like I can't no, even make my you point. You was interrupting. I, I went on mute. I went on mute the two times you were talking. And every yeah. time I was trying to land a plane, you interrupted me. I'm saying <laughs> that you so passionate about LeBron James and his family that you can see no wrong. You keep trying to find a way. You even said I interpreted what he said as. No, look at how you, how you interpreted it. He said what the, he said. This is Homelander. Yeah. This is LeBron James, the guy who mind the game. He said what he said. The highest IQ in history, right? The highest IQ in history. It ain't no way for you to change his words. You being wrong for changing his words. This guy know what he's saying. He the smartest right. man in the world, ain't he? And he was being good. Right. So, 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 because LeBron, I was going to say, so because, I'm sorry, y'all go ahead, dude. I, I ain't trying to be rude, brother, I ain't trying to, that, that ain't what I ain't trying to do that. You don't want to have no conversation, my baby mama be just wanting to finish too, you know what she be wanting to do? She want to talk the whole goddamn time, she ain't trying to listen, she just want to finish. Hey, you got to look at the statement. You gotta look at the statement, bro. Look at that. Read that last one. He says, lightweight, hilarious, with laughing emojis. He's being condescending, bro. Honestly, I just want to say this, man. I think real NBA fans are really not stupid. And we know that this is nothing but a big marketing ploy. And it gets that a lot of a lot of a lot of people are afraid to really just come out and say that only a few of us catch on to all of this is not but a matrix. So right. it's getting to the point where they're so like you like Kwame just saying, man. Stars are not born; they're made. You got an artist to just throw this man out there, and then you're talking about the pressure of it. Bro, you got to get a whiff of reality. Hold on. What? And, and they, they so hey, look, they so busy trying to run away from that. With everybody else, they say, "Don't cry, don't make excuses, don't be that black man that's always crying." With 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 LeBron, with Bronny, it's none of that. 
It's always an excuse. It's always that it ain't his fault. How can he be the smartest guy in the game who mind the game, but then every time something go wrong, it's everybody else's fault? When does the, when is it that heavy is the head that hold the crown? Yeah, when they come to put some flame on the king? But right there, nobody don't want to hear that teenager shit. And man, I was a teenager. That, that, that is a cap. That, that whole excuse that, oh, he's a teenager. When you become a professional, you have lost your innocence. I understood what I signed up for. The NBA, nobody is saying this, but the NBA is a grown man's league. That's why they spoke against letting young people into a grown man's league. It is a grown man's league. So you cannot have kitty gloves for anybody because they never had kitty gloves for no one. The moment you enter well, into a grown man's league. Go ahead, bro. Hey, man, can I get in here, man? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I said no kitty gloves. Yeah, no baby's allowed. For real. Hold on, man. Let me tell y'all something, man. Let me put my disclaim out there off the top. I don't like LeBron. I don't like Stephen A. And I'm a true Laker fan. But y'all sound like some haters, dog. Okay, uh, tell us why. This go on in the NFL all the time. And y'all don't have no problem. And I'll be straight what up. Is what, is what, is, what, is, what is this going uh, on in the uh, NFL? Uh, man, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm smoking at right now. What, what, uh, Come on, never uh, been Nepotism. Come on, nepotism. Hey, so but this, but this, but this is not that. This is not nepotism right here. They gave yeah. somebody, they gave somebody a, they gave somebody an office job. We're talking about the NBA. You think the NBA has the best basketball players in the world, correct? No, I, hold up, hold up. I ain't, I ain't get that far yet. I don't, I don't want you to mess up what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say is, every last one of y'all would have done the same thing. I think this is because it's LeBron. Look, okay, you saying that now because you sitting behind your computer. You ain't got thirty million dollars with a child who can play a little bit of basketball and you control the job. This to where I hire people. Bro. You ain't been LeBron James, and I'm telling you again, I don't like that clown. I know. At I the would. same time, hold up, hold up. How y'all gonna be sitting here on a show hating on a billionaire because he hired his son? Now that's not. You can't blame him for that. He's doing what he's supposed to do as a father. You use the word hating, right? What is hating? Yeah, you hate. Because you, you don't want to do it now. I don't he, he, he used two words that don't make no sense. Hating and blame. Let me nobody tell you what hating is. Nobody's blaming nobody. Let me tell you what hating is. Let me explain to what you what hating is. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you what hating is. What hating is is guys like Stephen Hunter and all of the second round picks that got a chance to compete and earn it. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you what hating is. What hating is is guys like Stephen Hunter and all of the second round picks that got a chance to compete and earn their spot. They will no longer get a chance to compete and earn their spot because you don't know how to think. Oh no, you don't know how to think. You don't know how to think from a well-rounded standpoint. You thinking from what you trying to put on to everybody else. Ain't nobody hating on nobody. We talk about that guy. We talk about that. Let me finish. Hold on, we talk about that. But but while we let you finish, you putting charges onto us. We. I'm that kid. Listen, I just I'm that hate. kid from the I'm that kid from the hood that would have never got a chance to compete against Homelander Junior. Junior. Hey, you still ain't trying to be tough, bro. I can't make my point though. All I'm but telling you, you the whole time I said I was talking, but you know I, 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 I was I was saying that's not why you a LeBron James fan. You won't be quiet. I, I just told you, you I'm not a LeBron James fan. But let you know, you let me get you off the stage. Because if you want respect, you gotta give it. If you want somebody to be quiet while you talking, then you might just shut the hell up while somebody else talking. So it looks like people ain't liking Kwame Brown takes on Bronny James. He's been fair with Bronny James. A lot of people didn't like with the whole summer league thing when Bronny was struggling his first few games. A couple points here and there didn't go too well. And a lot of people were saying, not just uh, Kwame Brown, like Bronny is NBA ready. Even before the summer league, people have been saying that about Bronny. And those first few summer league games pretty much proved that Bronny he has a lot more work to do but when Bronny James started to play good believe he had 13 points one game had 12 the other Kwame Brown saluted him be like look man you're doing better you know maybe you do have an opportunity to be a solid NBA player so when Bronny James wasn't playing good in the summer league Kwame Brown said this I love nepotism don't get me wrong I love nepotism you earn you work for your company and you got the money to put your kid in position to work that is fine but when it comes to competition, I love competition more than anything. I love competing. Like, I don't care nothing about no name. I don't care nothing about nothing. I love competing. And what I saw in Bronny James, I 
I don't see, and see, this no knock on kids that grow up in good neighborhoods and come from a good family, because Steph Curry grew up in a good neighborhood, come from a good family, and he's an assassin. Bernie James don't seem to have that dog in him. He does not, like, where does he pull from to get that extra grit? Because whether he know it or not, Bernie James, you are in a coveted position, bro. But this ain't gonna be the end all be all. You got, I think it's like 7.9 over two years. So a little less than 4 million a year. Now, what that did was, that put a bullseye on your back, dude. I don't see you frown in the game. I don't see you get mad. I don't see you yell at nobody. Where is the passion? It's like you just are such a nice little sweet little kid. Where is the compassion? Where is the dog? Where is the anger? He got a four year deal guaranteed. Man, stop playing. Oh, now see that's even worse. You get a four year deal guaranteed, dude. You supposed to go out there and tear heads off. Everybody thinks you don't deserve it. Hell, after this first game, I think you don't deserve it. Now, when it comes down to competition, dude, you gotta earn your keep. You gotta kick it. See, they took it off your shoulders to where you don't gotta worry about competing against other draft picks because now your contract is fully guaranteed. Everybody else would have had to compete. And you out here on cruise control, passing the ball with your daddy named LeBron James. Your daddy done stuck his neck out and said that you was ready to play in the NBA right now. And that was last year. That was when you was in college. You are here in the NBA and you trying to prove to everybody you here for a reason. And you only take like three, four shots, nine shots. What the hell is wrong with you? Are you scared or something? Your daddy is LeBron James. Shoot the damn basketball, Bronny. You got to show people. You got to show your naysayers. You got to show your father. You got to show everybody that, hey, this ain't no wasted pick. I ain't no bum. And even if you turn out to be a bum, earn the fact to be a bum. Earn the fact to be a bust. But it gotta be on you. Right now, you ain't earned a damn thing. Right now, everything has been given to you. And we like it all right now because you're black. But at the same time, there's other black people that could have been in your spot that wanted to buy their mama a house and they'll represent themselves better than you. Ronnie James, your daddy is out the way now. Now it's time for you to sink or swim. But I think your poor dear daddy set your up because he's so busy chasing legacy that he don't know he's going to destroy you. Because, boy, when them wolves, if you only playing like this amongst the talent that you're playing with, you're not playing against top-tier talent. Now, these guys are top talent for where they at. Now, let me not say that with no disrespect to none of those guys out there on the court because they can all probably kick my old right now. Maybe not. But let's keep it all in perspective. They're not the starting guards, they're not the starting two guards, they're not the starting three guards. So to have a guy that's probably not even going to be a, a viable option on a team or be the third or fourth option on a team, push the Bronny, Bronny James down like he was a rag dog, shoot a shot in his face and Bronny don't get up and, and forearm check him, he don't get up and do nothing, he just smile and run down the court. This is the nicest king son I ever seen. Yeah, LeBron James is Homelander because Homelander got a nice son too. Homelander trying to teach his son how to be a like him. And Homelander can't seem to reach that boy teach him how to be a LeBron is Homelander. And Bronny is Homelander Jr. He just don't got it. LeBron trying to force him to have it. <laughs> Giving him everything he needs to have it. He got a four year plan, but he just don't got it. If he had it, he would have understood from the word go, I got to punish these. I got to punish him because they think I didn't earn my spot. You know the position you in, Brian. Just because you ain't come from the hood, you can still turn into a dog. You got to be mad at everybody that thinks that you don't deserve you supposed to be there. You got to use that. Any mother that thinks you ain't supposed to be in the league, that's the energy you supposed to be using. Not your daddy. Not your last name. You supposed to be pulling from that energy that you think I ain't supposed to be here? Oh, hell no. Let me show you why I'm supposed to be here. So I'm Bernie James. That's the attitude you're supposed to have. You coming in here with this nice guy's bullshit. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Now, your daddy talked a lot of stuff, Bernie. Your daddy talked a lot of stuff, Bernie. And unfortunately, because of what your daddy said, we in the media are gonna be critiquing you. Your daddy said you was ready to play right now for the Lakers. And then it turns out you got drafted to the Lakers. And I'm that type of man that I don't give a about what you say. I wanna show me what you what you can do. Damn all that talking. You there right now, Brownie, that you can prove your daddy right or wrong. And the approach that you got is dead wrong. I know your daddy probably telling you, boy, why the hell you not shooting the ball? 
I would rather my son be old for goddamn 15 than goddamn one for uh, two for nine or whatever you shot. You supposed to be shooting the ball 15, 20 times a game in summer league. This your time to shine. 15, you supposed to be shooting 20 times a game from anywhere you want to shoot from. Hell, your coach, goddamn your daddy boyfriend. I mean your boy, I mean your daddy boss. I mean, <laughs> the coach, your daddy goddamn friend. You know what I'm saying? They mind the game together. So I can't see, like either you, either you or Kerr, Bernie, Bernie, you gonna get the name Kerr because you don't got no reason to be scared. Your daddy name is Bronny James. If you play for clutch sports, your daddy is the lead. If you mean to tell me you don't, you scared and timid? You ain't got a damn thing to be afraid of. To be or not to be Bronny, you got to shoot the goddamn ball and be all you can be. If not, I'm starting to think you might be a cover boy. You might be scared. You might be scared. I don't think he's saw it. He got all the athletic ability in the world. And he got all the stats in the world in practice. They tell you about how many shots he made out of 25 from the three-point land when it was practice. See, it's a lot of motherfuckers that like the scoreboard up in practice. See, y'all thought that was a joke when A.I. said practice. Practice? When you talking about the game, we talking about practice. There's a lot of people that got them a hell of a practice player. But how many people can shine bright like a diamond when them lights come on? See, them old school players know. Who are you when them lights come on? When them lights come on, that's you get to shine that real bright. Who you gonna be there? Yeah, see, Bernie, he's a practice player. He's been in workouts and drills his whole life. This boy will go into a workout and look like a goddamn masterpiece. I believe it. If you, if LeBron James, your daddy, you done had some of the best trainers that money can buy. You done had your daddy, who was a hell of a player and a trainer properly. You done had Gilbert Arenas. You done had everybody. So you'll look damn good in a workout and in practice. But what about the game? Every time I've seen Bronny James in a structured game, he don't act like he's that guy. He act like he's the friend of the guy. He's too nice. See, Bronny James, Bronny came, LeBron came from the hood. Bernie James came from suburbs. So where can he pull from to get that dog out of him? The only way he can pull from is he gotta be madder at the people that think he don't deserve where he's supposed to go. See, there's people out there that feel like, Bronny, you don't deserve that's my spot. And they gonna come take that. You gotta feel like this is my spot and ain't never one of y'all gonna take it because I'm supposed to be here. And if you don't feel that way, you might as well pack it up and go home. LeBron ain't gonna be able to save you when it comes to competition. He can put, he can lead you to water, obviously. He, can, he can't make you drink. Yeah, he can lead you to water, but he cannot make you drink. So, Brian, the next game, you better come out there and be home letter, son. You better listen to what your daddy been telling you. Shoot that goddamn ball. I know <laughs> I know one thing. People might not like me, but I know damn well your daddy is probably yelling at you to shoot the goddamn ball. Now, why you ain't shooting the ball? So, hey, whether he trash or not, uh, you better go out on your shield. You better go out your way instead of going out other people's way. Because <laughs> if you go out other people's way, timid, shy, not shooting the ball, man, they're going to roast at you. If you go out shooting that ball and trying and putting forth that effort and it turns out you're just not good enough, we can live with that. But, man, you got to stop all that goddamn smiling. you supposed to be mad right now. You got money you didn't deserve. You got you on a team you don't deserve to be on. At least that's what everybody's saying. So you got to be mad. Take a sense of pride. Your last name James. <laughs> Your last name James. You ain't got nothing to be afraid of. Shoot the goddamn ball anytime you feel like it. That's the last time I'm going to say something to you. But LeBron, I believe you set that boy up for failure. And because of the light that's going to be on this boy back, I really believe you set this boy up for failure. You want to be the king so bad. You want to have a legacy so bad to the point where you didn't let your son develop. You should have let that boy go back to a different college because you thought USC did him wrong. Let him go back to another college so he can mature into his body, mature into the game, get a little more physically and mentally ready for you being his daddy. His daddy's name is Homelander. You, you should let that boy get way more prepared than to put a product out here that's gooey. Dude, I love chocolate cake, but if the inside of the chocolate cake is gooey, yeah, I don't want to eat no gooey at the chocolate cake. You should let that boy cook a little longer. See, you was afraid to see that boy cook in college because you know he probably wouldn't meet, meet the bill. So you hurried up and rushed him through the process, and now he's gonna get cooked. <laughs> he's gonna get overcooked. Yeah, Bronny gonna get burnt. <laughs> and that's the sad reality. He's gonna get burnt. I'm sorry. You wanna chase legacy this bad at the expense of your son? This doesn't make any sense. We all can see. And I, everybody that's talking about nepotism just because he's black. 
we cool on that. But you got to talk about this kid's mental health. The world is going to be talking about this boy. The whole world. And a lot of you don't know what that's like. This is a teenage kid that's going to have the whole world talking about him all because his dad. Now, he should have let that man mature a little bit more so he could be ready for this. I know all too well what it's like having the world talking about you. It's cool to have money. It's cool to have all that. But respect, that's way better. So LeBron set this kid up for failure because he's a nice kid and everybody going to hate him off top just because how much money he got. And right now, LeBron's statue can protect him. His status can protect him. But when LeBron is out to lead, boy, it's all she wrote. So this is a shame. Kwame is the new Stephen A. Okay, well, let me get you up out of here, dude. You don't want to hear Stephen A. Mm-hmm. Kwame is jealous. I'm okay with that comment. But he ain't gonna call me Stephen A. I'm jealous of Bronny. Well, I'd be jealous of Bronny. He could have had the world talking about him. I had the world talking about me already. And sometimes I still do every time I say something that you don't like. So make it go viral. But the truth of the matter is, I'm right. This man, LeBron, care more about his legacy, and he's going to leave his son out to dry. And this boy is going to be the only one to have to deal with this ridicule that he's going to have to deal with. He's not ready to be an NBA player. He don't even have the mentality of the dog to be an NBA player. He ain't, I, I don't see any courage. I don't see anything he's fighting for. What is he fighting for? It wasn't no going home for me. I got to get my mama a house. One of you is going to lose your job. You were about to lose. When I showed up, my mentality was this. So you were about to lose your job. You were about to lose your job. Because it wasn't no going home for me. It was going home to what? I told my mom, we'll get her a house. So one of you, his head's got to come off. In this practice, in this workout, ain't none of you going to be faster than me when we step on this line. Ain't none of you going to jump higher than me. So he gave his criticism of Bronny James. But when Bronny James started playing good in the summer league, check out what Kwame Brown had to say. He did everything for the last two games. Bronny James, Homelander Jr., uh, has done everything that a young player is supposed to do. He was aggressive. He was more aggressive this game at attacking the rim. He didn't just stand in the corner. He took the contact, got a floater off. He was getting into the lane. With all that athleticism, 44-inch vertical, he, whatever he just doesn't have in height, he makes up with that vertical. So just because a guy is short, don't mean he shouldn't go in there and, and hit a guy and get into his body and, and make a shot. So he, he uh, it made everything else a part of his game open up. The moment he came off the curl and, and, and faked the pass off that one leg, popped that jump shot, uh, I think Bronny should play more mid-range than shoot threes. His mid-range game looked pretty decent when he was getting to a spot. Um, he should be working on getting to that spot more. It looks awfully good when he does it. Um, the layups and stuff opened up. He even made the step back three this time. This time he, he, he got the little razzle dazzle step back three. He lined it right on up. But that came after the layups. That came after running and, and playing with reckless abandon. He got, he got his teammates involved. That was a nice play where he came off. Hell, he could have took the shot. He still could have took that shot. I think he's a little bit, uh, he passes a little too much, but that will come once he gets more comfortable. So the pass he made to connect, wide open three, that's good to see. That builds a relationship with him and connect his teammates for the next four years. So, yeah, got there. even TP can keep it real without somebody saying he hate. He got to improve his uh, handle big time, though. Okay, that's a fair critique. He does have to improve, improve his handle. He definitely has to improve that handle because he needs to, at some point, be able to slide over to his natural position, which is point guard. But when he's in a half-court set, I saw him come off a of pick, and he did what he was supposed to do. He probed and hit a shot. I mean, he looked like night and day. It looked like some of his nervousness or whatever he was worried about is starting to leave. Because, for real, he got nothing to worry about. He gonna play. And if I'm his agent, I ought to, I ought to sat him down. Look, man, what are you doing? You ain't got nothing to worry about. Just go out there and play. And that's what it, for the last two games, that's what it looked like he's been doing. He looked way more relaxed. And if y'all see, since I said, this kid don't smile. This kid look more happy playing a video game than he does basketball. And then all of a sudden, for the last two games, you got pictures of Bronny smiling. You got pictures of Bronny uh, hand clapping. Jumping around, he looks like he want to be there now. So what y'all call hate, and just like y'all listening, other people may be listening too. Don't get it twisted like Muff don't listen. <laughs> but if he continue to play like this, you can build on this. And all that second round pick stuff that don't mean nothing, that's stupid. There's so many great second round picks. I showed you the picture. And then Ticket TV go into more depth uh, with talking about Isaiah Thomas and uh, Dylan Brooks and guys like that who've carved the niche out in this league uh, from the second round and they are 
are 100% needed on a team, 100% useful on a team. And so all this stuff that the media is telling you is a bunch of bullshit. They have a sweetheart darling narrative about LeBron, but my thing is not to tear Bronny down. It's, it's that sweetheart darling narrative is bullshit. He got, he got a sink or swim. And right now, the direction that he's going, it looks like he can potentially swim. Especially when his daddy come out on the floor, if he can set guys up the way he did Dalton Connect, if he can run the floor hard like he did for those floaters and layups, you know LeBron gonna draw some attention. So this kid can get a lot of backdoor lobs if he's really focused on backdoor lobs, dribble penetration, pulling up for that little elbow shot. That elbow shot that he got is good money. I'm still not sold on the three-point line. I, I say stay encouraged, stay off some goddamn video game, and uh, keep working on your ball handling. If he can get that ball handling tight on a rope, and I ain't saying he gotta be Steph Curry. If he get that ball handling, handling a little bit tighter, a little bit more crisp, and continue working on his jump shot, the deep ball, because it's an adjustment here. The kid basically played 25 games in college, which is a shorter three-point line. He played high school, which is a shorter three-point line than that, so he gotta get a time to adjust to the actual three-point line in the NBA. But what he don't have to adjust to is those mid, the mid-range game. That should be right up his alley. He need to work his way inside out, inside out. Don't don't become a three-point shooter. You don't become a three-point shooter overnight. You either are or you're not. And if you're not, you gotta work at being a three. No, for real, he don't got no time for no video game. He should retire the video game and focus on his number one craft, which is basketball. Now, can he pick back up his hobby after he get that ball handling down, after he can play point guard? Absolutely. Pick back up your hobby. But for all you got them haters that think just because, and even when I was giving my assessments before, they was calling me Stephen A. Smith. When I'm telling the kids to run the floor, don't run to the corners. And now, the last two games, he didn't do that. Look at how well he played. He went from 10 points to 13 points. His next game, he should get three or four more points. You know, let's see a 16, 20-point game out of run. He can do it easy. Because a couple of those times he passed, could have shot it. Yeah, he don't be solid. I think he's an all-around solid player. There's a lot of young, solid players, man. I'm talking about they have all-around skills. You can just say the kid can play video games. has nothing to do with it. No, 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 not when somebody commit millions of dollars to you, I'm telling you. They might not say it because it's Bronny, but when you have a deficiency at something, they would tell me to work on something. And anything that I was doing that would take away from that, and I didn't improve on the basketball court, guess what they would say? Hey, you don't have time to be doing this, doing that. You got to improve. You got to do this. You got to do that. So it's the right thing to tell another young kid. When people invest their money into you, they expect improvement. That's just a fact. That's no hate. Yeah, after he pick up the, the ball handling skills, go back to playing video games. Because then the team ain't going to have nothing to say. Trust me, when people give you millions of dollars, anything you're doing, if you hang it with friends and that's stopping you from playing well, they're going to say, well, you might need to stop hanging with your friends. Something got you distracted. It could be your girlfriend and leave it to you. You can get away from your girl. So I'm just saying, I'm giving a, a critique from a professional standpoint who has made some of the same mistakes of putting outside distractions of what we think is passion and what we like over when somebody gives you millions of dollars to perform. When that happens, they're watching closely on why you're not performing. Trust me. But I'm definitely glad he uh, he looks like he is persevering and he's quiet in the outside noise and he's just playing the game. So he's showing that he got some heart because if the world was talking about him good, but then half the world was talking about him bad. ESPN was talking about him good, but everybody else was telling the truth about his game. And so now that he's showing otherwise, I hopefully the guys who are talking about him and talking about his game in a negative way, now that he's playing well for the last two games, hopefully you talk well about him playing well, talk good about his good game. We not no crap givers over here, so if you're playing bad, we're going to say you're playing bad. If you're playing good, we're going to say you're playing good. It ain't no issue, it ain't no problem, it ain't no beef. It ain't no pushing nobody down. It ain't no none of that. It's going to be fair and balanced media over here. We don't have no uh, elite chasers over here. Yeah, we don't care not about no elite black person or white person. We're going to critique you. And if you do good, we're going to say you did good. If you don't do so well, we're going to say it in a professional way that you didn't do so well. What we're not going to do is because everybody like you, we're not going to follow the status quo and not say something about you. And we're not going to be dubbed haters and whatever else because, like I said, people are going to start seeing that the media, the mainstream media is biased. They are okay with calling Westbrook, West Brick, 
they're okay with disrespecting black men every day, but it's a certain elitist status that they will not disrespect and they will not even mention that they not playing with, you know? So over here, we're going we gonna to bring some balance to it. Your game dictates what we say, and we're going to be watching the mainstream media. Don't ask me why I'm talking about Bernie. I'm talking about Bernie because the mainstream media is talking about Bernie. And whatever player the mainstream media talk about, we're going to talk about it. And I'm sure at some point during the year, you're going to see how despicable the media talks about a black player. And I can't wait because I want you black guys, you black pro black. I want y'all to keep that same energy now. I'm going to be the one reminding you, hey, uh, that guy is a black man. Y'all ain't supposed to be talking about a black man like that. 80% of your sport content is about Brian and now his son. Um, so I'm glad you're a super fan that you have uh, statistical analyzed my channel and uh, you've broken down that 80% of my sports content is about LeBron and now his son. Okay. Well then I think I need to boost that up to about 90% because I think ESPN and First Take, uh, their content is about 90, 95%. Brian. So I think I need to boost it up. So thanks for telling me that. So I'm going to boost it up. Make sure you come back and let me know when I'm running at about 90, 95%. Because I'm trying to compete with the best sports shows in the world. And that's what they're probably running about right now. So if you were trying to tell me I needed to boost up to my talk about LeBron and his son. Uh, because the mainstream media is all boosted up to 90 they appreciate that, brother. So again, the criticism has been fair for Kwame Brown on Bronny James. A lot of people may not like it because, you know, his father's LeBron James. LeBron controls the media, the mainstream media. So you got to abide by the LeBron James and Clutch Sports rules. Like, don't say anything negative about Bronny James. Everything has to be positive. And if you say anything that may seem negative or constructive criticism, the media is going to attack you. People are going to attack you. But shout out to Kwame Brown, man, standing on business, able to, you know, if he has a good game, hey, you had a good game. But if you're not playing good, you're going to call it like it is. And you may not like Kwame Brown for some reason, but he is fair. Shout out to Kwame Brown. Keep putting out some dope content. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, comment.